All right, guys, welcome back. This is the second installment of my Illustrator CC tutorial on how to illustrate or vectorize a car. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about seeing the shapes you want to draw. Today, we're focusing on the highlights and the shadows of the body of the car. I accidentally didn't record my screen when I drew the body lines, which is what you see in light blue. I also started drawing a few shapes for the highlights on the body panels. So I'm just going to enlarge my layers palette so you can see that I've added a few more layers since the last video. But don't worry, you didn't miss much. The first new layer that I want to talk about is the green layer on the top called body lines. After filling in the main shape with a color, I go over the lines of the body panels, such as door lines, the gas tank door, hood, and headlights. These serve as early reference points when drawing in the highlights and the shadows. The second new layer is what I call the shadow layer. This grounds the illustration when I turn off the background layer during the body pro uh, drawing process, but you'll see that later. And then lastly, the shading layer. This is where we will spend a majority of our time today. I'd like to preface this entire series will mainly be using the pen tool. I'm very comfortable with it and currently do not have a tablet to play around with. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to turn on a few of the shapes that I have already drawn so you can be fully caught up. I'm also going to change the body lines to black and I'm going to increase the stroke size to about two so they can be easily seen. Once I have a few shapes drawn, I usually try to start thinking about the final color palette. This way I can sample the colors for future shapes. Okay, let's draw a few more highlights on this front bumper. By clicking and dragging before releasing the mouse, you can draw the shape of the line in the direction that you want to go. Some may view this as simply tracing, and while it very well may be, you still need to visualize the shape of the highlight and shadow and assign the right colors. So just remember to pull the handles of the line in the direction that you want to go, and that will just set you up better for your next anchor point. And I tend to like to draw just using a stroke. It's easier to see. And the best part about not having to follow the shape exactly is it's up to you to determine the amount of photorealism or stylization that you want to achieve. It's all up to you. Obviously, I'm not drawing any of the reflections of these trees, um, so I'm visualizing the shapes that I want to see at the end product, and I'm not trying to be too literal. So once I've started to draw a few highlights, I try to focus on areas that tend to have the same color tone. This way there's no need to pick a new color for each shape, you can find several similar areas to draw, like the highlights on this front bumper, for example, and th they should all be the same color. So that way you don't have 25 different colors on the front of this bumper, even though there are. Um, but when you're illustrating, it's it's simpler to see if you if you just keep a similar color family and choose from those same colors. Okay, let's switch over to shadows and draw a few shapes that we can assign some dark tones to. This will start to define the bumper and add depth and a little more realism. Again, we're trying to focus on shapes that all have a similar tone, so the same color can be applied to more than one shape. I'm going to draw this shadow on top of this highlight so the shape doesn't have to be perfect. I'll simply going to take that path in the layers palette and drag it underneath the highlight I just drew. So now I'm just going to add a few more shadows on this area on the front bumper. The 
remember to try to keep your shapes simple and the colors don't have to be exact. So this area down below isn't exactly this dark, but that's up to you. I usually try several different variations before I end up settling on a final color. Think of it kind of like painting. You're kind of mixing your paints to get you know, the right shades and tones. So once I zoom out, I can't really see the shape I just drew, so it obviously needs to be a little bit darker. So I, I darken that up and then I'm gonna drag that to the bottom of that uh, layer as well so that it sits underneath that highlight. I've added a new layer for the front lip. This will be three shapes, the highlight, the main part, and the shadow. And they don't necessarily have to be drawn in that order. Once the shapes are drawn, even if it's on top of the other, you can just drag that path underneath of another path in your layers palette. I will enlarge that so that you can see me do that. So just drag it underneath. And then you can start to move paths around and you know, layer them on top of each other in whatever order you like them to be seen. Sometimes I always draw on top of one another and then move after. So here I'm just gonna add a few more layers, or a few more shapes, sorry, to, uh, to give a little bit more detail down there in the, in the corner. And now we can uh, just turn off the background layer and turn off everything else and see everything that we've drawn so far. Okay, let's move to the hood. Draw a few highlights uh, up here. And these can be a little tricky because sometimes, uh, as in this image, there isn't a clear defined shape. So you have to see the shape without it actually being there and draw what you want to see. The image should provide a reference, but you're in ultimate control of of the shape. These lines don't also don't really have to be exact because they are going to live underneath of the main body lines of the car. So by assigning that stroke to be a little thicker in the beginning, um, it kind of hides everything that lives underneath. So. Here's what I was talking about when there's really no defined shape. So you kind of just got to imagine where those highlights are going to land. And I'll be honest, I, I will redraw the highlights on a hood sometimes two or three different times because almost always the first shape doesn't really work. I'm liking this shape much better. And I think I'm going to stick with that. Let's move to the side skirt. I'm going to duplicate this shape on the front door and add another layer of depth here. Sometimes duplicating the shape doesn't necessarily work in your favor and you have to tweak the shape. We're going to do that using the direct selection tool. It lives directly below, you guessed it, the selection tool or A on your keyboard. This allows you to grab an individual anchor point and manipulate it along with the handlebars of the anchor points on the curved lines. So you can change the shape however you see fit. Sometimes this is better than drawing a new shape. And the last thing we're going to cover in this video are gradients. This is similar to what you see on the windows. The gradient dialog box is where you'll find how to manipulate the colors of your gradient. In this application, I'm using white on both sides of the gradient, but with one side having its opacity set to zero. Now I can take the gradient tool or G on your keyboard and you can click and drag your mouse to pull the gradient as much as or as little as you'd like to achieve the desired look you're going for. And there you have it. We've successfully got one step closer to making this look like a real car. 
I've continued to play around with uh, some more shapes to add more detail in the highlights and the shadows, and I suggest you do the same. I've added a gradient on the roof, as well as more details on the hood. At some point, it becomes easier to draw the shapes you want to see without the use of the background layer. So once a majority of the highlights and shadows are drawn, adding the fine details becomes entirely up to you. I plan to release a short video on the windows next. In that video, we will be using the Pathfinder dialog box to create all the shapes we want. It'll be short and sweet. If you're interested in more Illustrator CC tutorials and other car-related nonsense, consider subscribing. If you liked this video, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.